podcast. I'm Charles Skaggs, one of your co-hosts this fine evening, this fine sweltering 100 degree almost evening here in Columbus, Ohio, and ready to talk some Twin Peaks with my other co-host, who's a little under the weather today, hopefully feeling a little better, and that's Zan Sprouse, of course. Hi, Zan. How are you? Hi, Charles. Yeah, I'm not doing so good today. Hanging in there. Yeah, I'm hanging in there. Right. I've got, uh, for those of you out in the podcast land, I have uh, atrial fibrillation. Uh, it's, the, uh, AFib, the AFib. The AFib, yes. And so today was a bad day. Well, so. I'm sorry you had a bad day. And Thank you very much. Hopefully to watching some Twin Peaks will cheer you right back up. That's going to help, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it has nothing to, yeah, it has nothing to do with my mood or my no, anything. It just sometimes make you, my make heart Make you feel says, a little better, hopefully. Yeah, sometimes my heart just says, not today. (laughs) (laughs) Not doing this today. Stupid heart. Stupid heart. Stupid heart. Too good for me. Being all wimpy and dying and stuff. What's up with that? Yeah, what is that? Cut it out. I need one of those Grinch moments that makes it bigger and stronger. (laughs) Yeah, you need to be three sizes more. I know. That way, if there's any sort of problem, it doesn't matter. You just need to, like, give some um, Christmas presents back. I guess. Or I need to be from Gallifrey and I have a backup. There you go. Yeah, you need it. Yeah, you, you, where's your um, bipulmonary uh, yeah. system? Seriously. What's up, what's up with that? Right? Uh, exactly. There's a little Doctor Who reference for you people that, you know, you should be listening, of course, next stop everywhere. So you know all about all this stuff that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So uh, Twin Peaks. Uh, we're obviously going to talk here at episode 61. We're going to talk... <gasps> Brings back some memories. Brings back some memories. As I get all choked up, like Bobby Briggs. Yeah. Deputy Bobby Briggs, as it turns out. I know. What a strange turn of events his life has taken. Exactly. Obviously, he uh, got his life on track. As We'll talk about that for part four of Twin Peaks The Return as we do our commentaries. Continue those here. And... Um, before we get into that, though, I just real quick want to kind of give a little Twin Peaks news. Nothing major. It's been kind of a quiet week. Thankfully, nobody died on us. Hooray. Thankfully. So, everybody, you know, take your vitamins. Stay alive. We don't need that. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. We didn't, we're tired of reporting dead actor news. It's good advice for Dougie Jones and everyone else. Exactly. But, um... So the news I got this week is just kind of an update on Cheryl Lee and Ray Wise. Heck yeah. Remember, it wasn't too long ago that Zan and I were very fortunate enough to see Ray Wise and Cheryl Lee here here at the Studio 35 Theater and uh, Draft House. And we got to um, watch Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me and then watched a little Q&A with them and got autographs and pictures don't talk about the pictures oh yeah we're not supposed to talk about the pictures sorry you'll leave them out of it brings back some memories they bring some memories <laughs> what um so you know we kind of talked about that uh zan at least had mentioned this that uh they were kind of t- mike mcgrainer the host of the event was kind of talking about um getting that um to be replicated at other various places across the country. Well, guess what, kids? If you're in the Milwaukee, Wisconsin area. Or the Chicago area or the surrounding. Right. Somewhere in the... You're within a two-hour drive. I think you should go. Pretty much. I would go three hours, personally. Yeah, heck yeah. Um, For for Ray Wise and Cheryl Lee, heck yeah. Yeah. Um, They're going to be appearing at the 2019 Milwaukee Film Festival... 
And apparently this is according to the Milwaukee Record that they're going to be screening, of course, Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me at the film festival mm-hmm. on Tuesday, October 29th, 2019. Followed by reportedly an extended conversation with actor Ray Wise and Cheryl Lee and a film after party. So there's an after party. We didn't get an after party. And well, uh, we'll give fans and, and film of the film and the TV show a chance to celebrate the 1992 David Lynch directed cult classic Beyond the Theater. Hey. So, nice. so pretty sweet. Um, just thought I'd pass it along, you know, because obviously you want to look out for any of our fellow Peaks geeks out there exactly. in, in around the Milwaukee, Chicago area. Yep. Little heads and up. Speaking, speaking of Mike McGreener, yep. uh, you guys should all be following Mike McGreener Presents on Facebook so you can see, especially if you're in the Columbus area. And again, within two hour drive, I would say. Right. Um, Mike's been trying to get an event to come here to Columbus to meet PJ Souls. And that was supposed to happen on the 27th and 28th of September. But unfortunately, that is not going to happen. It's going to be postponed until November. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yes. And again, it depends on advanced ticket sales. So if uh, if you like Twin Peaks, you're probably into culty movies right. like Halloween or Carrie or... Uh, rock and roll high school, that kind of stuff, which is what's going to be showing along with PJ souls actually being there. And it's been moved to November. And unfortunately I will not be able to make it. Who I had knows? Tickets. Yeah. I had tickets for this 20 September 27th show and I will be out of town for the postponed one. Aww. So you guys should uh, hopefully get a refund. Yes, I did. Mike got me a refund immediately, which was that's really good. nice of him. Thank you very much, Mike. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's good. Um, but yeah, I will be out of the country, so I will be unable to um, be unable to make it as much as I want to. I'm considering slipping Mike, like you know, the forty dollars it would require for <laughs> sure. Nope. And for me, uh, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, definitely, like I said, this has been postponed, so you have some more time. But make your decision now because. It all depends on advanced ticket sales, so Got make it. sure you uh, make sure you do that. Yeah, and of course, Mike McGrainer is continuing his director series of David Lynch films. Yes, and, September twenty first. Yep. So next weekend here in Columbus, um, around the I think you said the twenty first, right? Um, so mm-hmm. that is he's going to be airing or showing Mulholland Drive, one of my favorite David Lynch films. This is but this is hands down my favorite Billy Ray Cyrus movie. Yep. <laughs> well, this is also a great one because Naomi Watts is in it, and hey, mm-hmm. we just happen to be talking about an episode that introduces Naomi Watts as Janie well, E. How Jones. Is this? Do you see how I kind of segued back into the Twin Peaks thing a little bit there? That's perfect. Good job. That's because I'm a prof- no, I'm not a professional. I've, I'm absolutely not a professional at all, but. Well, you act like one, even though you're not paid like one. Yeah, I'm, I'm a I'm a good liar, I guess. <laughs> I, I'm so good. I'm so good. I even fool myself. How's that? Only your hairdresser knows for sure. <sighs> yes. Um, so, speaking of which, um, return part four. You ready to talk about it? We'll get uh, we'll get ready here in a minute. Uh, this, of course, aired. On May 28th, 2017, written, of course, by Mark Frost, David Lynch, directed by Lynch, yada, yada. Um, In addition, of course, to the introduction of Naomi Watts as Janie E. Jones, we get, let's see here, let me run down the cast list. So we get the return of David Duchovny as Denise Bryson. Which is so amazing. Which is fantastic. And I'm so glad he was willing to reprise that character. Yep. Um, very cool. We get the introduction of Robert Forster as Sheriff Frank Truman. Excellent. Yep, because uh, obviously his brother Harry S. Uh, not available. Has the cancer. Has the cancer. So yeah, F cancer, everybody. Yes, F cancer. Yep. Um, let's see. We get the return of David Dasmalchi and his pit boss work. Uh, we get the introduction of Michael Sarah as Wally Brando. 
Yeah, we can probably figure out something else to talk about during the <laughs> 20 minutes. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. A little dramatic sting there. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll, fi- we'll yeah, figure... Yeah, Bueller's on line two. Exactly. Ding, ding, ding. Right. Fuck her up, Buttercup. Exactly. Uh, Richard Chamberlain makes a little cameo as Bill Kennedy. Crazy, but awesome. Yeah, that Richard Chamberlain. You know, Shogun Richard Chamberlain, that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see what else. Oh, and uh, there's a nice... Li- oh, you get the introduction of James Morrison as Warden Murphy. Warden Dwight mm-hmm. Murphy. And there's a nice little Easter egg for Twin Peaks fans. Sabrina S. Sutherland, one of the executive producers of Twin Peaks The Return makes a little appearance as floor attendant Jackie. Nice. In the in the Silver Mustang Casino. Fantastic. So look out for her. So a little trivia there on that one. That's pretty cool. And in addition to obviously the great uh, Miguel Ferreira's Albert Rosenflower Flower and Albert uh, Rosenflower. Albert Rosenflower. David Lynch of course is Gordon Cole. Krista Bell's Tammy Preston. There he goes. Kimmy Robertson. The return of Dana Ashbrook is Bobby Briggs. So Excellent. Lots of things to like about this episode. And uh, for those of you playing the home game, of course, I'm at we're we're at the one minute thirty three mark. At least I am. Okay. If are you ready? Right after the floor stops, right? Right after the floor stops spinning, yes. The Chevron floor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just when it turns to black, right after the spinning chevron floor, that's where we are. Okay. So let me get my secondary earbuds in there. Because we're so high tech here at Ghostwood. We are very high tech. We are the techiest high tech you can ever get. All right. So if everybody's ready, and we'll do this in three Two, one, doink. Oh, 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 oh. We have to start, start again. Over. All right. Yes, because mine, mine is screwed up. Okay. Sorry, everyone. Technical difficulties. Sorry. Do, 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 yeah, do, do, my do, Blu-ray do, player do. just decided to restart on me here. Please stand by. Please stand by. While we're doing this, I want to know do. if you saw um, the tweet from Russ Tamblin. I did about West Side Story. Not about West Side Story. It was a photo of uh, Donald and Ivanka Trump holding golden shovels. No, I didn't see that one. And he just has the picture, and then the caption is, "I feel personally attacked." Nice. <laughs> no, I saw a, it was a picture of Russ Tamblin with Steven Spielberg mm-hmm. on, on the set of Spielberg's remake of West Side Story. Which I'm still not sure what I feel about that, but you know, well, it's it's Russ Tamblin approved apparently. That's that makes me feel a little bit better about this whole situation. Yeah. Now I don't know if it's um, Richard Bamer approved or not. Well, who Maybe. knows? Yeah, who knows? But it's Ben Horn. It's Twitter. Ben Horn. Yeah. So you know, yeah. we got to exactly. we got to we got to take uh, you know uh, Doctor Amp over over Ben Horn, right? I, I'm gonna. All right. Okay. okay, so I'm ready. So we're going to do our countdown again? Okay, let's do it again. So everybody's uh, hopefully right. uh, apologize for the difficulties, Sorry. but we're right back. And uh, back on the, like I said, the 1 minute 33. Just when and... we're black after getting the floor. Exactly. So we'll do this again in 3, 2, 1. Doink. Play. That's better. There we go. Beautiful downtown Las Vegas. Alarms are blaring. Uh oh. Oh yeah, I forgot about him. Yep. What's his name from uh, Stranger Things? Oh, hold on a minute. I have to get it back to him. Yeah, I can't. Uh... Hello. You, uh... Hello. He's Mr. He's Mr. Mr. Jackpot to get right Jackpots. now. Look at those giant quarter buckets. Once again, I'm just saying here that. Uh, yeah. so, so I think that woman just running around with a bucket. I think that was Sabrina S. Sutherland, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. 
like I said before, being somebody who plays pinball a couple of times a week. Right. I want those quarters. You were all about the quarters. Yeah, I think that's her right there. Yeah, I think that's her. Um, I'm not sure who you're about to talk about for Stranger Things. David Desmalchian? No, the one next to him. Barry, what's his name? Oh, I don't know that guy. Oh, I can't think of his name. Let me let me let me pull him up here. That's all right. Uh, oh, I'm having a hard time. Oh, now we get some more red room emojis. And slot machine lady is going for it. It's like, no, go over one, one more. Not Barry. Murray. The actor's name is Murray. Brett Hill. Oh, that's Murray. Yeah. I didn't realize that was Murray from Stranger Things. Yep. That is Murray from Stranger Things. He doesn't have nearly as bad of a comb over. Uh, nearly as bad of a comb over, and his beard is not nearly as as uh, bushy and epic. Got it. So, and he's not speaking Russian. There's that too. Yeah. Wow, he's thirty on. jackpots. Thank you, Mister Jackpots. Now maybe I can take a shower. Yeah, that would really. Be great. Yeah, once you once you kind of like wipe all that year of grime Good. off. Ethan Supley, everybody. Yep. Now here we I don't, know who, I don't I have no idea who that is, but you don't know who Ethan Supley is. I don't. I'm. I'm, I'm okay. must, please inform me. Did you ever watch? Uh, My name is Earl. No, that would probably be why I don't know okay. that. Okay. Yes, he he's Randy in My Name Is Earl. But uh, did you ever see Mall Rats? Yes. Oh, is that okay. the guy? Is that the you know sailboat? Like I see the sailboat. Yes. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Well, now I know yep. who you're talking. See that I know. Gotcha. That's gotcha. Wow, I didn't realize that was him. That uh, is him. That is uh, Ethan Supley, all uh, grown up. Wow. So. Yep. Hopefully he finally saw this. Oh wait, no, he that's right. The uh, caption said he never saw the sailboat. He, well, they said at the end it's yeah, it's, it's, he, he finally sees the sailboat. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> then he's like, "No, wasn't it? Wasn't." Oh. And his wife is Dara Paxton? Yes. Who is the uh like sixth or seventh cousin of Bill Paxton? Yeah. It's the same the right, same, same family, Paxton, but they're same. very not yeah. as, not as, yeah. they're very, uh, very distantly related. Dist- yeah, okay. Now she plays a character named C- Candy Shaker, who is in no relation to can- yeah, candy. candy, Mandy, and Sandy. Yeah. Yeah. No, th- this they're they're a couple here, and what's going on is they're finding um, Dougie. They're telling Dougie where he lives. Right. So. And of course, Doug- know, uh, Dougie is Cooper, although Cooper is extremely addled at the moment. Yes. Exactly. He's basically, the, his poor fate was to become the old waiter. <laughs> I don't think he's okay. So let's just go ahead and let him walk out the door right? and get in a cab to God knows where. Yeah, that's way to, way to kind of, um, you know, take the initiative there and help. Yeah, seriously. I wonder if they could just let him leave. Like, would they, would they be able to just keep the money if they just let him yeah. leave? Yep. That'd be pretty funny. Yes, David Desmalchian. Yep. Dude, you're being escorted by Abracadabra on The Flash. Just just a little tidbit. And uh, who's he going to be in Dune again? Oh, um, Piter, I believe. Piter DeVries. Is he Piter DeVries? I believe yeah. so. Yeah. I think Which so. is a good call. You seem to like that call. I do like that call. I think that – I like good, David Good casting. Desmond. Good casting, yeah. Yeah, he's a very interesting actor. Yeah. He's really interesting in um, Mulholland Falls. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about him. Mm-hmm. In the, in the restaurant? Uh, you know, the diner, Charles, the diner. have to go see Mulholland. Uh... I, know, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a double movie day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm just going to have to go see it. So, um, yeah, so here we go. We, yeah. have, uh, we have Murray Goldman trying to... Give Dougie Jones like thousands of dollars in a bag, and I love that it's like a, just a sack full of money. Yeah, it, I'm surprised it doesn't have a dollar sign on the side I of the bag. I really wish it had had a dollar <laughs> sign on it. It would have been so great, but it's just a giant sack of money. Right. 
Like, we could have got you a briefcase or something a little more tasteful. No, we got you a canvas sack. We could have written you a cashier's check. Yeah. You know, got, you a, got you a gift card. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get you whatever you want. You want some You want some food? You want some whores? Yeah. Whores. Got, got you a... Uh, Oh, look at that! Look at that pen holder with the dice on it. This place is so classy, right? Oh, so. and I love the fact that the room is like really darkly lit. <laughs> and no cabs. You get a limo, sir. Dougie Jones. Dougie Jones. FBI. <laughs> Dougie Jones, FBI. FBI. Yeah. I am the FBI. I love that he probably spent like. You know. Here you go. So he did how many jackpots? Wasn't it like so 30, 30 jackpots, I thought? 30 jackpots, but wasn't it, wasn't, how many of them were for the old lady? Well, those are like at least two. Yeah. So it's like, you know, for less than $10, probably, he, uh, just in he gets footsteps thousands in the hallway. And thousands of dollars. Yeah, I'm doing the um, subtitles as well on this. Just come back to our yes. Come back to our casino and please put more money in. Day or night, we're open 24 hours. Kind of like Seven Eleven. Oh, thank heaven! Come and knock on our door. We'll be waiting for you. There is gambling for you. Security cam. Yeah. You're on Candid Security Cam. Yeah, we're always watching you. So we know. Me but you know the security, Mr. Those security cameras, they're not gonna pick up uh they're not gonna pick up the red room emoji. No. So Yeah. Fortunately on Lancelot Court there's only one house with a red door. Of Hard course, of course, it, it would be a red door, right? Red. Of course, it's a red door. Yep. Uh, you know what else would it possibly be? This is Twin Peaks. <laughs> the only uh, other well, thing... actually, this is Vegas, but the show is well, Twin Peaks. True. The show is Twin Peaks. Yeah. yeah, that's that's what I meant. The overarching yeah. show is Twin yeah. Peaks. This is the universe that is Twin Peaks. You should have know. like a Chevron walkway up to the front porch, though. Um, or like a Chevron entryway. Yes. Yeah. She- Chevron driveway. Uh huh. There it is, red door. Yep. There's your door right there, Mister Jones. Welcome to Elizabeth Arden. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep sitting here. I don't know what to do. Right. God. How bad was this accident that he's? Right. You know, not surprised. Nobody's surprised at how he acts. You think a limo driver who probably wouldn't know him would be a little concerned? You would think so, yeah. I keep hoping for good things for Ducky Jones and Jamie E. and Sonny nobody, no, nobody offers, like, do you need to go to the hospital? I love that. It's like, yeah, you just, I don't think he's okay, but yeah, he can just go get a cab. He's fine. Yeah, he's got a big bag of money. He's good. Yeah. I'm sure that's he'll, the thing. He'll, I, be that's, perfect, he'll be perfectly safe with a big bag of money in Vegas. A giant bag of cash in the middle of Las Vegas <laughs> right. in a cab. Yeah, he's fine. It's he's all, fine. It's all good. Yeah, all right. I'll wait here to make sure you get in the house because you know. Yeah, something could happen to you on the way from here to the porch. Oh man! If his neighborhood is anything like uh, Rancho Rosa, he's going to get rolled on his way up to his door. One one nine. One one nine. Let's play some cards and do some heroin. <laughs> Jeez. Ignore your kid. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say it, Charles. Watching this again. Yes. I'm a little bit. Whoa! What is that? <gasps> what did you just hear? It's an owl. What was that? It's not what they seem. They're not what they seem. Yeah. Um, the owls are watching. Those things spook me. Yeah, they should, buddy, especially when you're next to him. Right. Um, <laughs> Naomi Watts, everybody. Naomi Watts. Tink girl yep. sidekick. 
Take Girl Sidekick. Yes, and Naomi Watts, who is like Take Girl Sidekick, Australian. There you go. Yep. Where the hell have you been, Dougie? Nothing says true love like a, a slap across the face. Mm-hmm. He's trying to help. He's Mr. Jackpots. But sadly, she wasn't able to smack some sense into him. So he's apparently been gone for three days. He missed Sonny Jim's birthday. Yep. And here's the thing. During those three days, even before he was Cooper Dougie, yeah. and he was Dougie Dougie, he's, instead of going to his son's birthday party, he's... He's with Jade. Yeah. It's, you know. But but honey, Jade give two rides. Jade give two rides. Yeah, it's not not cool, Dougie Jones. No, 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 no. But uh, where'd you get that black suit? And how are you? How are you suddenly hot? <laughs> exactly. It's like, how come you lost all that weight in, in three days, <laughs> and you have a bag full of money? And, and now you have like three hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Yep. <laughs> Did you win all this money? And why do you look like Kyle McLaughlin all of a sudden? No. Why are you freaking hot? Why do you look like the mayor of Portland? <laughs> yeah, how did you... Uh... Why do you look like Daisy's dad on Angels of S.H.I.E.L.D.? How does that happen? Oh, did you see that picture of Kyle McLaughlin on Twitter holding an owl? No. It was like the best thing I'd ever seen. Excellent. And you know, there's like a thousand comments that say they're not what they seem. So, right. yeah. You know. Twin Peaks fans, you he, ha- he has to know it's going to do that every time he does that. Oh, he has to know that. Mr. Jackpots. <laughs> <laughs> you want all this money so we actually right. have this money? I'm curious as to how this... When you win this kind of money, Charles, at a casino, how are you taxed on it? I wouldn't know because I've never won that kind of money at a casino. No, I have no idea. Uh-oh. Yep. There's enough here to pay them back. So we don't know, know who they're they in some are. Sort of trouble. They're in some kind of trouble right oh, now. Oh. And we have see, here's the thing, you know, three hundred thousand dollars is gonna get anybody who's mad at you to not be mad at you anymore. <laughs> and uh Dougie, have I told you I really want to go to Hollywood uh, and become an actress? I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna fix you a sandwich. And then I'm gonna get you a piece of cake. And do you find me attractive? I find you attractive. Actually, that's in a couple episodes. Yeah. Well, nothing, you know, nothing turns on your wife more than a big bag of money. I, 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 anybody. Right. Seriously. Right. You know? <laughs> I think Chad can come over with a big bag of money and be like, no, what you doing no, later? Let, let, let's not push it. It is Chad. It would take a million dollars. Yes, yeah, so it would take a Chad. lot of money. It would take a lot more money. Dr. Kildare, everybody. Yep. David Lynch. Those of you who did not grow up in the 70s with moms that watch the Thorn Birds. Right, right. This is the, the famous Richard Chamberlain. A... Uh, Famous heartthrob. Back in the day. And, uh... Primetime heartthrob. Yep. And uh, one of the the early famous coming out stories. He is a gay man. And, uh... Has done a lot for uh, gay rights. Which is awesome. Just fantastic. A a pioneer. Yep. Yep. And to hear him talk, it's. And I think he's he's a really interesting person because to hear him talk about it, it talks about how he. Um, oh, guess who's back, oh, everybody? It's Bryson. It's and, Fox uh, Mulder and Drag. No. Around this time, around the time of the return of Twin Peaks, there was also uh, the return of the X Files going on. So yes. this was a this was a good time for fans of the Duchovny. It was. Yep. So. Because I'm a big X Files fan, so I am uh, a huge X Files fan, and I definitely didn't expect him to be in Twin Peaks: The Return. So when they made that announcement, I was all kinds oh, of excited. A little bit jealous of uh, Agent Preston. Yep, barely thirty. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful, barely thirty. <laughs> I'm old school. I like French hookers, <laughs> which you'll does find she, out soon. Does she speak a little French? 
<laughs> yep. Wild a, thing sometimes. Back when he was Dennis and he worked for Gordon and now she's the boss of everybody. Yep. Yep. So. Now I like Gordon talking about here how he stuck up for Denise. At, yes. the, bu- at the bureau. Mm-hmm. I told to all your colleagues fix their, their hearts, hearts fix or, their die, hearts or die. die, which is a great which statement. Which is fantastic. Yeah. I want to um, credit to Lynch for I that. I on a T-shirt. Yeah, and I want to pass that out to everybody who's protesting at the pride parades. Yeah, fix your hearts yeah. or die, people. Fix your hearts or die. So, the chief of staff of the yeah. entire FBI. Good job, Denise. She's moving on up. Moving on. I just love seeing Federal Bureau yep. of Investigation all at once, unabbreviated. <laughs> Cooper does. Uh, it's, they're so they're so adorable. Yeah. And uh, was uh, Bryson? Bryson was never Blue Rose, was he? That's why. No. That's why. No, I don't think that's so. Why he survived long enough to become Denise and be director. <laughs> right, exactly. That's why. He, that's why he moved up in the bureau. Yeah. Exactly. Because. <laughs> Everybody else either disappeared or died or became insane. Yep. Or both. I have to say, David Duchovny as a woman is very stylish. He wears. She's a, he, well, it's. I think sometimes I think they did a good job with this because sometimes when they have mm-hmm. male actors who are playing females in drag or yeah. transgender people, they say, overdo it sometimes. Right. But this looks like it could be his actual Do bears hair. bear? Do bees be? And, um, you know, it's not too much lipstick. It's not too much eye makeup. Yeah. So they did a really good job with her. Very subdued. Yeah. And, and if you think about it, we've talked about this here on the podcast, that Denise Bryson was a trans pioneer character. Yes. Yes, very much. And Denise was trans before there was really trans on television. So Before we even... Really wrapped our head, mainstream America yeah. wrapped its head around the concept. Exactly. It doesn't actually tell yeah. you what's going on when no one's here. So here's Lucy. You always kind of wonder what Lucy's up to when nobody's looking, and this is a fascinating uh, exploration of this. Yes. Yes. she's She's very concerned with She's very concerned with the details of very trivial things. Yes. We come in early and the heat's still on. Like she really overthinks things. Yes. I love how she puts so much energy into figuring out the thermostat. Right. But can't figure out how cellular phones work. And that's what we're about to see here. We're about to see that, yes. But it's a great pratfall, everybody. Yeah, she does a good job. It's pretty epic. Lucy has some cute clothes, too. I love how she still dresses the same. With those cute little skirts and then oh. those sweaters. So here's Robert Forrester as Frank Truman. Hello, Robert Forrester. Who, as a replacement character for Harry, I think was a really inspired choice. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> now, when she filmed that, she falls back on this um, padded. Obviously, yeah. So she was okay. So Kimmy Robertson was okay, obviously. But yeah, it's a nice little stunt. Couldn't stand out in the parking lot all night. I hate cellular phones. Uh, how is this pot? And what I think is so funny is that, you know, she we've just had... can't wrap her head around this, can she? Pretty much everyone has had a cell phone in one way, shape, or another for at least a decade yeah. Yeah. at this point. You know, even the people who were resistant to cellular phones. Even my 80 year old mom can wrap her head around this a little better that's than Lucy. Sick. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's so funny. Now Check here, it out. Yeah, emails. yeah. Now here we get to um, get to see the 2017 version of the Twin Peaks um, Sheriff's Department. It's obviously grown since yes. 1990, 1901, mm-hmm. and uh, they've got a dispatcher now. They've got a few more deputies. Chad, look, look, look at that nice setup. The dispatchers got. I know. I think they got some funding after they had some people die. You well, know, they're like. If more you, than three of us, you guys. Well, remember that, you know, they've got connections. You know, Harry had connections to Gordon Cole. That's so true. May, so maybe uh, Gordon made a few calls on Harry's Maybe behalf. Gordon helped out a little bit. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. 
especially if he was trying to put some um, uh, reconnaissance on Cooper in the lodge, maybe. I would think so, too, trying to figure out where what, Cooper might have possibly right. gone. So maybe Because remember, the last time we saw Cooper, according to oh. the... Um, and guess who? It's Bobby Briggs. It's Bobby Briggs as a cop, you guys. What, what? What? I don't think any of these people know that Bobby killed a guy. He killed a guy. I'm, I'm, I have to think that he probably left that off his application. I think he's probably leaving that off of the resume. Yeah. Exactly. So we still got drugs running in through uh, Twin Twin Peaks. Which let's, we're see, gonna... let's see here. 1990, 91. Let's see. Dealt drugs at the uh, Twin Peaks High School. Killed a guy. No. So yeah, I, I know the you know I know the legal system. Yeah. But. Uh, Thanks for sharing that, Bobby. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't need to know that. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> He's their mobile punky. Yep. I love that after all these years, Andy still calls Lucy punky. I think his they... Pet, his pet name for her. This is the most successful Twin Peaks love story. Pretty much. I mean, they had, they had a kid together. They stayed mm-hmm. together. As far as yeah. we know, as far as we know, they never separated. Yeah, exactly. So you know? now, now, obviously, uh, Big Ed and Norma finally get their act together. Finally, finally, but it takes but, too long. But you know, Lucy and Andy, pretty much the most successful romance long term. Yeah, on this yeah. show, they had they had a rocky start at the beginning with Dick, Dick. Tremaine and Dick, Dick. Yeah, Aw. Andy's so sweet. I wonder if that's really um, Michael Sarah photoshopped into that photo back there behind I think, her. I think it is. It looks, like, awesome. it looks like it looks like Michael Sarah because I'm I'm looking at my iPad. I can see it up close. Okay, it, it looks a lot like him. Oh, Chad. Chad. For those of you who might have forgotten, we hate Chad. We hate Chad. Yep. Chad can suck it. Yep, something's missing. You know, Chad, why are you even here? You had nothing to do with the Laura Palmer case. So get the hell out. Yeah. This is not for Johnny Come Lately's. Why don't you go All hold right. up another wall outside? Seriously. And look how bored he looks. It's like, do you have right. any idea how important this case was to the lives of everybody here? And then all I can do is mock Andy. That's his, that's what he's there for, apparently. And you know what? Here's the thing. He's not even as good at mocking Andy as he could be. Right. Like, he's not, he's not, he's not, he, uh, he basically fails, Albert on, level. fails on every level. Yeah, he's not even at Albert levels. Not of, even uh, close to Albert's. Uh, that gum you like is going to come back in style. I'll chew on that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But a Yeah, that's enough, Chad. Get the fuck out. <laughs> Get the hell out of here, Chad. Whatever. Yeah, see? Nobody wants you here, Chad. Nobody likes you. Get the F out, Chad. Yeah. I'm not usually this much of a bully, you guys. I just really hate Chad. <laughs> I think in, Chad, in Chad's case, is, Chad is the one exception to the bully rule. Well, Chad's a bully first. Right. So, so it's know. okay to bully a bully. Yeah. <laughs> because because <laughs> bullies, see, when you oh. confront them, are all cowards. So. This, is, this Bring, has got to be hard on Bobby. And I remember watching oh, this. And we get the Laura time. Palmer theme and everything just to really go for and the gut. This, look, this is a good job that he's doing here. Yep. It reminds me of the scene where he is being interviewed by Cooper and he breaks down and he says, she right. maybe do drugs and right. she maybe deal drugs. And yeah, that ex- I would, that's a really yeah. good analogy. Yeah. He does a great job right here. I'm, I was very, very impressed with Dana Ashbrook yeah. at this moment here. You kind of forget that you, you kind of forget that. Hey, Dana Ashbrook can act. Well, and the thing is, Bobby is a complex character. You know, Bobby puts on a real yeah. peacock front. But that scene I was just talking about, where he is breaking down for Sheriff Truman and Agent Cooper, there's a lot more to Bobby. And even those scenes that you have with those heart-to-heart scenes he has with Major Briggs, and the time he's the times he's talked to his mother, that scene where. Um, he and his mother are talking right before Major Briggs comes home. Right. You know, there, there's he's not he's not Mike. 
You know, no. Mike is just a jerk through and through. You know, right. but there's you know even when Mike is with Nadine and he's a little bit nicer, it's because the sex is good. It's not because <laughs> he likes her. Right. You know? He's still he's still a jerk, and but Bobby's not. Bobby's Bobby's a much more complex character than he would lead you he, to believe. Bobby has depth. And, yes. and it's because of that he was able to evolve, you know, and, change, and grow and change. He's not the the you know just the obnoxious punk, obviously that he was in high school. Right, right. He's grown. He's actually now on you know he's a, a police officer now. So obviously, uh, quite a change from his past. Yes, quite a change. And you know, with everybody who is in here, even. Even Bobby, there's a MST three K quote that I'm reminded of that it says, "If bad movies have taught us anything, it's that small town cops hold their belts a lot." <laughs> that's a great quote. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, fantastic. That's a good one. All right, so I'm just gonna go. So here we basically and... now know what happened to Major Briggs. Major Briggs was killed in a fire right. soon after. Um. So they, so they obviously killed off Don Davis's character. Yes. He's a, although why, of course, we saw his head floating around in space in episode three, we don't know. So, okay, so here's Michael Sarah as Wally Brando. Right. Now, now, if you took a kind of like went for, uh, you know, like coffee or something at this point, I would not hold it against you. No, I would not... Uh... I would not hold against you either. He does tell us a little bit that uh, Harry's his godfather. Yeah. So, which I think is kind of funny because no, of the I... godfather and Marlon Brando right. and all that. Right. Even though he's dressed as the wild one. Yes. Which... Yeah. Now, obviously, uh, he's doing his best Marlon Brando impression here, but. Right. And I think that uh, with the. When it comes to Marlon Brando. If you're going to have an image of Marlon Brando that just says Marlon Brando, I think his character in The Wild One is what would do it. Right. So I, well, that's, just, than, that's kind of more one of his def- definitive roles, that and The Godfather. And his definitive look, too, that yeah. we, we think of him Although I like kinda... that. And I think as an older man, he would be definitely The Godfather, the tuxedo and right. the cat and all that sort of thing. But um, just Brando in general, I think this this look – you look at that and you immediately know this person is doing Marlon Brando. Right. You know, you look at somebody in a tuxedo, maybe they're doing the Godfather, maybe they're not, but that, that hat, that leather jacket, that ringer shirt, that's, that's the perfect. Yeah. Now, um, obviously if you're, if you're so. doing a, if you're ever going to do a Twin Peaks parody of this scene, you should have um, Wally Brando dressed as Brando as Jor-El from Superman the movie. Right. Yeah. Because you can't exactly just have somebody walking on white robes all the How time. How hilarious would that be? That would be incredible. I would I would watch that. And so that um, that can make this scene a lot more tolerable in my opinion. I think so too. It just goes on a little too long. And I was I was started to say this no. a little a little bit earlier when we were watching Dougie stand outside of his house for a few minutes that I am a little bit more patient with this series as it's going on. There are some things that I'm still get on with that and this is one of them. Yes. But, you know, I've talked before about how I was so impatient during this series to find out what happened to everybody, to find out what happened to Cooper, to find out what happened to Audrey, to find out what happened to all, you know, all the people. We, I was we still had so many about. unanswered questions by this point. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, it's like you know, things like this, this to me were just sort of getting in the way of that. Yeah. But, because you know, obviously it, we hadn't seen Audrey by this point. So that's... No, we hadn't seen Audrey by this point, and we hadn't seen um, we haven't seen Norma. Shelley. We, had, we yet. hadn't seen Big Ed or Norma or anybody. Yeah, we seen Norma, Big Ed. We haven't seen um, we haven't seen uh, the double the double R. We don't know what's going on with Doctor Jacoby. We don't know he's Doctor Amp yet. Right. We don't know where Nadine is. I mean, there's so many things we've seen James, <laughs> and we've seen oh no, we've seen Shelley. Yeah, we saw Shelley at the Roadhouse. This is true. You're right. That's right. Yes. Where she um, was going on about James. Yes. And she said that James has always been cool. Um, we know Shelly has a daughter, but we're not 100% sure who with. Bobby's still around, so we're thinking maybe Shelly and Bobby. 
I don't know, but uh, so many there's questions. a lot of there's a lot of things that are unanswered that and f- to spend so much time right on yeah. a character that we'll <laughs> never see again. And just and if and you that, think it's not a long time, think of how long we've been talking about this scene. Already. Yeah, think of, yeah, that's yeah, that's the thing. I mean, this, it's not, that right there should give you a great indication of how drawn out this scene is. And it's amazing yeah. that David Lynch, if you remember watching the special features on this, he had Michael Sarah do this in one take. Right. And then asked him to do it again. <laughs> yes. Exactly. And so he's got, you know, and this there's nothing against Michael Sarah and there's nothing against David Lynch in this. I mean, I think it's Michael Sarah does a good job and it's kind of funny because right. you know, it's this young kid acting like this nineteen fifties character. Yeah. And, it's you know, how did his parents raise him to be, to be this guy? You know, how did this happen? That sort of thing. Um, and, and it's over. Yay. And there was much rejoicing. Yes. It's just, not what I, it's just not what I want. No. It's just not what I no. want out of two weeks. No. Um, but, you know, it's Unless, David it's Lynch's like, call. Can we get back to Cooper already? Yes, please. How much do I love that jacket? Like, <laughs> I love that jacket. The Century 21 jacket. No, the Century 21 jacket is the one he already had on. Okay. That's the gold one. I this know. One is, yeah. The one that was it's on the bed. The cool color. Yeah. Oh, okay. I love that color of green. And, oh, here's Mike. Mike is going, what the heck is going on? Something's wrong. I can't get good cell reception. It means they're mobile, Punky. <laughs> nice. But uh, He's reaching out to Cooper through the void. Oh, Charles. All this furniture. All the electrical all sockets. This furniture. It's so great. Yeah, and Vegas is a great place to find make mid-century furniture. Right. Because that's when Vegas became a thing. Mm-hmm. So. You see me, don't you? It's like, yeah, you're kind of tiny, though. You're kind of little and you're kind of in the chair. You little itty bitty. Got a little bit of an Edith Ann thing going on with this chair right now. <laughs> you were tricked. Oh, so see, that's a nice happening? twist, right? And there's a little pebble, little baby, little BB. That's where the rest of you is. Yeah. So he's trying to get through to either Cooper or Dougie. Don't die. Just, yeah. Yeah, don't die. Don't Uh-oh. die. Now I have to go pee. Now I have to learn now, how to pee. Now, now we're doing the Dougie dance. Uh-huh. The Dougie shuffle. The Dougie shuffle. Yeah. <laughs> do, do, do. <It's... laughs> Mr. Mr. Dreamweaver. Go potty. So how do I do that? Yeah, he has no idea what to do. I hope he at least you know, pulled down his pajama bottoms. Yeah, I hope he did. <laughs> For his sake, I hope he did. But yeah, I can't. You know, being being an adult, I don't remember what it was like to not know what to do. How, how to pee? Yeah, you are. yeah. Well, I'm, a lot of us you don't. don't know how to pee. Yeah. But gosh, I can only imagine not knowing what's going on with your body and then peeing and how amazing that would feel. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from the bathroom mirror. Don't even. Yeah. yeah. No. You do not have good luck with these. No. Well, and especially with this angle, it's yeah. essentially kind of a recreation of the um, Twin Peaks original you know finale. It's, it's the same pajamas, too. Yes. Blue pinstripe pajamas. Nice little nod there. Yeah. But obviously well, he's looking for Bob, but doesn't see Bob's face. He's looking for something. He's not sure what he's looking for. But Well, remember looking... last time you looked in the mirror, you saw Bob's face, but this time now he didn't. Yeah. He lost weight. 20. Yeah, slightly. Don't you notice? Like, how observant are you? Yeah, that jacket looks also, you know, three colors too loud for his job. Right. You know. Well, you know, he's a very, he's a trendsetter, that Dougie. Yeah. Fashion forward. Dougie. Is our, is our Mr. Jones. Yeah. Dougie's doing his tie, which is pretty hilarious. 
I love that they call their kids Sony Jim. Yeah. That kills me. <laughs> well, if, otherwise, you think about it, it's Jim Jones. Yeah. Think about yeah. it. You know, like mm-hmm. that Jim Jones. It's not a good, uh, it's not a good look. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give that kid Kool-Aid. Let's just say. Yeah. No, no, it's bad. Bad idea, bad idea. Bad Paul Ripley. Yeah, so thumbs up from Dougie. Yeah, exactly. So. So. It, oh, so, oh, 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 are so, we start to feel like Cooper again, maybe? Yeah, so this is where Lynch is like get, trying to give Cooper fans a glimmer of hope. Mm-hmm. This is our. Up. Yeah, this is, this is our, you know, our little Cooper yeah. glimpses that we're getting here. Now let's listen to Dave Brubeck's Take 5, the Dave yes, Brubeck Dave Quartet. Brubeck. <laughs> oh, and Ducky doesn't know how to wear a tie. It's so cute. It is so cute. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my goodness! Like he's ready to go shout bonsai. Yep. So, I kept thinking too when this when this story was going on. That uh, something was going to happen when uh, Dougie has the sensation of maple syrup colliding with ham. Right. You should have gone. Like maybe that would have happened. Hand, smacked his hands together. I don't see any bacon. I'm just seeing pancakes. So. Which is a crime, by the way. Bacon should always be served with pancakes. Uh, All, always. I don't know. I'm, I'm, a, bi- I'm a huge breakfast guy. Always. I like just think bacon could, takes up space. No, 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 no. It complements it. I guess. Because it because the savory offsets the sweetness of the buttermilk pancakes. See, that's the thing is I don't eat sweet pancakes. I don't put syrup mm. on pancakes. I don't either. I put butter. Yeah, just just but, butter. But but a good pancake mix has a little sweetness in it. Um. Yeah. Like a I like a van- like a vanilla like a vanilla. About it. Yeah. yeah. Um. I'm very serious about this. I understand. <laughs> this making what... pancakes, making bacon pancakes. Pancakes. Taking bacon and I'll put it in a pancake. To quote Hellboy, pancakes. Pancakes, yeah. No, I want pancakes. Pancake. Mm. Got a nice glass oh, of God, juice I want there. Some pancakes right about now. <sighs> All right. I have, you know, it was just right around the corner from me. I know, right? You're like, you're like <sighs> sitting with them So tempting right now. And I just had dinner. See, I haven't eaten today. So. we got to hurry and wrap this up so you can get some dinner. Yeah, come on. Put some syrup. Do this thing. Mm-hmm. No ham. Where's the ham colliding with my maple syrup? Exactly. Where's my almost cremated bacon? Where's my coffee so black? It's black as midnight on a moonless night. Black as midnight on a moonless night, yeah. But that's right, because by this point, he hasn't rediscovered coffee yet. Not yet, and I thought that was going to do it. I kept We thinking, all did. We all did, because yeah, why wouldn't it? He, he has some coffee. And this is why we felt so cheated, because it should yeah. have. Coffee, like, you know, his, his coffee intake level rises the more we, the more we get Cooper. That's the way the it should have been. That, that was my theory, yeah. Well, and with, with see? It should have been, like been like a progress bar. Yep. Yeah, like, it goes from red to like yellow. Exactly. <laughs> oh, here's your coffee. I am Dougie's coffee. I am Dougie's coffee. 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 Like I said, see, he turned into the old waiter. Yeah. You thought I was kidding about that? No, I did not think you were kidding. And then, oh, oops, it's hot. Remember? Damn good coffee and hot. Yes. <laughs> I got to work that more than one time in the episode. Yay. Oh, yes. So we get the return of Jane Adams as Constance. Yeah, and here she's trying to run the fingerprints of uh, the body that was found with um, the head and oh. access denied. So, access. And I love that it's like one of those little 80, 1980s style... Um, pop-up warnings that you get on computers. Yeah, like it's, you know, war games or something. Exactly. You know, like, yeah. you know, like warning, government, you know, database or whatever. 
comes exactly. up. Oh, and there's the future Mrs. Mr. Constance Talbot. Albert, I hope so. Albert, those two crazy kids had to stay together. Oh my gosh, I so hope they stayed together. It became like a, the, a cynical, happily married couple. Please. So adorable. Obviously, we lost Miguel Ferrer, but we have to hope that Albert lived on. I would like to think that Albert lived on. That would be really nice. He, Jane Adams, by the way, is also in Claws. So apparently there's all kinds of Twin Peaks connections to the show Claws. Nice. I should be I should be watching that more than I am. I brought a picture for you. <laughs> oh, there you go. This, uh, faces of Stone. Albert's like, whatever, dude. Whatever, dude. Once that Martin can Landa you, came off of it. Can you imagine 25 years of listening to that? <laughs> <sighs> I'm surprised Albert didn't just, yeah, Aww. jump out a window. Poor Tammy Preston. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Car- <laughs> Carsick. <laughs> Carsick! Now we need to stop jerking the car for Agent Preston. Is that Bill Nye, the science guy, is the driver? No. <laughs> oh, that would have been so amazing. <laughs> I would have loved that. Can't imagine why you're on the wrong side is of the bed. Is there a right side of the bed for Albert? Not in Albert's world, no. Yeah, that's the thing. Well, so Albert... that was denied is going to you know, help get the uh, FBI and the military involved in this whole major Briggs debacle. So, so yeah, I still think that, uh, now, Tammy Preston is a tall drink of water. I still think that this, uh, everybody should be a little bit more excited about the fact that Cooper's finally shown back up again. Yeah. Well, probably guarded. Maybe they've, you know, been fooled before. Perhaps. Yeah. They don't want to get their hopes up. He was, oh, Albert, he's already, he's already starting in. Mm-hmm. Insulting the the, uh, ma- the master of shade. Insulting the locals. Albert's an acquired taste. He's very much an acquired taste. But the foundation of such a belief is love. <laughs> I love you, Agent Cooper. Dog leg. Machine gun. <laughs> dog leg. And a dog leg. <laughs> Apologies in advance for Albert. Yeah, one of the best li- one of the best lines good. of this show, the return. Yeah, that's you got to always apologize for Albert. That's a, not a good look for you, no, it's Cooper. Like, damn! <laughs> Holy jumping, George! Somebody yeah. is in dire need of a makeover, yo. Somebody get rid of that mullet. That would be great. Because damn, because uh, damn, hire a decorator to come in here soon. Because uh, damn, you know. <laughs> yeah. Now we're gonna find out that Cooper knows who's there before I, the before the thing even lifts up. Can, can I say how very ear of excited I am to be talking about this episode with you, Zan? Very ear of excited. I agree with you. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. It's Elvis. No. Thumbs up. And, 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 really, and a, a super creepy thumbs up. But that's the that's the mark of the Cooper. Trying really hard to convince him that it's. Oh, and I did not notice this from beforehand. Irev was written in the. Uh... Yeah, the subtitles. Captions. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was, uh... The captions, yes. Excuse me. Something's, something's wrong with the Cooper. And, and, and the way they're they're talking to him, they know, like, they're. it's almost like they're speaking in code. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. And he's, uh, but, you know, the, and the problem is, is that because Mr. C is part Cooper, Right. He knows some things about Cooper, but I still feel like Gordon yeah. and Albert should know that this is not. Yeah, you know, and Mr. C is giving him this total BS story 
Yeah. Of, you know, like, hey, I was working undercover. With Philip Jeffries. Yeah, no. Yeah, you no, haven't. you weren't. Philip Jeffries, we watched him disappear in 1988. Right. And, of course, Mr. C is speaking very oddly. Yes. Yes. I was on my way to present it to you when, you know, I stopped and killed a bunch of people. Right. Veered so. over across the road. <laughs> See, Ed Cooper wouldn't look like this. He wouldn't have his hair. He wouldn't... Uh, he wouldn't have a dog leg in his trunk. Right. Nor would he have cocaine. You know, he would not have... He also wouldn't have not talked to talked to Gordon for this amount of time. Right. So, uh, so Coop, you want to explain why you have bob hair? Yeah. Do you want to explain like why you're repeating yourself and uh, what and the heck's why, going on and why here? Why you're speaking in a very monotone voice? Yeah. And no, you didn't leave messages. You know the messages that you I know, left. The messages that I left. I left them with with somebody. You know the girl. <laughs> I left them with the girl. Yeah, with the yeah, you know. She still works there, right? Yeah. Oh, we're we're gonna get you know right on that about getting you out of. Yeah, here. we're right on that, Cooper. Yeah, like a, we're on a, like a laser. Trust, relax. And see, this is the thing: is that Cooper Cooper would know. <laughs> yeah. That you know he talking- has to be. That, you know, if Cooper did some things, he would know that he has to be in prison before he is able to be exonerated from that. So he's, oh, what does that mean? I've never really left home. Yeah. Thumbs Gives him another thumbs up. Another thumbs up. Yep. Again, now, Kyle Gordon, now, Gordon, now Gordon obviously stuff. is like dialed right in. He knows that obviously this isn't Cooper. And he's trying yeah. to, he's basically on a fishing expedition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something's wrong, and he's well aware. And everybody looks at it like, what the F was that? <laughs> what did I just listen to? So. Yeah, fi- file the charges. Yeah, you don't want to give him his phone call, trust me on this. No. That goes uh-uh. really badly for you guys. I would not, yeah. Not a good idea. Yeah, I would not do this. It doesn't end well. But, you know. Oh, hey, Tammy gets to speak finally. <laughs> yeah, see, she's, you know, she's figured this out. Now, if you notice, they're using a blue filter in this scene. Because of blue rose. Because of blue rose. <laughs> Who's Philip Jeffries? Oh, David Bowie. Yeah, you asked me to. That reminds me, I must get my watch my watch fixed. Well, you're not uh, you're not Blue Rose yet, so go wait in the car. I wish you were feeling better for real. F you, cancer. See, Christabel needed to work harder to bring Miguel Ferrer back. Yeah, that's the thing. Oh. Your reaction. I've not seen this before. Something you want to tell me? Yeah, that's the thing. It's, you know, he's pretty, uh, he didn't have a whole heck of a lot to say. And that's not like Albert. No, not at all. Yeah. Albert's so, you know, little... something, something is up when Albert is quiet. Yeah. But, uh, uh-oh, what did, what did you do, Albert? <laughs> what did you do? What the hell? It's the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Mother pus bucket. <laughs> Nobody steps on a church in my town. No, seriously. See, here's the thing. Urgent. Make it fast, make it urgent. Emergency. So, yeah. What, what coordinates? They wanted coordinates. It's a bad scene. Yep. Philip was our man in Colombia. Yeah. 
That's not a good... Uh... A week later, a man was killed. Albert, what did you do? Just kiss already. What is it? What did you do, Albert? What did you do? Let me just stare at you. Now here, like, they look like they're communicating telepathically here at this point. Well, I think they both know that something's wrong. Yeah, but I mean, just they're both quietly staring yep. at one another. And then there's there's like a little sound and then it quits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think David Lynch is doing a pretty good job here, too. He is. He's a, he obviously became yeah, a little better actor known, over the years. Not known for being an actor. I think he's doing a really good job here. No. But then again, I think... I think Twin... Oh, jeez. He's good at facial expressions. I'll give him that. He is. Mm-hmm. Like this whole wincing he, thing right here. He's really good at that. He's also... I, I think this is very much you know his baby. So Right. He's more, really he's more investment. I think he's, it's part of him, you know? Yeah. So. It's easier for him well, to relate to it. Yeah. So, something is yeah, very, something is very, well very ear of wrong. Yeah. I hate to admit yeah. this, but I don't understand the situation at all. At all. <laughs> Which is, a, <laughs> so, yeah. So if even David Lynch is confused by this, we have absolutely no, have have no chance. We have no hope whatsoever, people. Yeah. <laughs> Albert. Blue Rose. Yeah, that's all you can really say. Blue Rose. It doesn't get any bluer. Nope. Nope, that's the thing. And I think that's that's a good thing for these guys. They know that there's some things that just are not going to make any freaking sense. Nope. I know where she drinks. So where's where's Lil dancing? What happened to Lil? Uh, so here we have Au Revoir Simone. Au Revoir Simone. And doing one of their two songs that they do during Twin Peaks The Return. Uh, this one is Lark. Lark, yep. But uh, and- but after obviously we've had a like a a couple of really good ones. This is kind of a, a. This was a little bit of a letdown for me. This was not one it's, of my favorites. That's it's, not, true. it's not horrible, but um, after you know, after the chromatics and uh, the cactus blossoms, this mm-hmm. one just does not have the same punch. Well, and also, this is where I really started to. I'm sorry, you got a little glitchy. You got a little glitchy the, there. The, was the Skype glitchy? Yeah, this is where I really yeah, started to get glitchy. disappointed. Um, when I would see the band at the Roadhouse. Right. Because I knew the show was over. Yeah, because now by this time you're into the routine. Yeah. And I and I don't... Um, I don't want the show to be over. You know, there's so many things. You know, we just found out... It's like we just started that, this and they're like, oh, it's over already. Yeah. And now, we're, now it's over. And if you remember, Charles, this was on Showtime. We had to wait an entire week. Right. For the next episode. Well, you yeah, know, we, not... we, we got a little spoiled because it, at first they were showing, like, we saw the, the first two episodes back to back, and then they right. posted episodes three and four on demand. Uh huh. So we could watch these. And right. then from this point on, they just did once a week. And so oh, it was just torturous. It was, it was torture. It's not like, this is not like, you know, we were spoiled Netflix rotten. Streaming, on that. You know, can't just binge Stranger Things or Dark yeah. Crystal over a weekend. It's like, oh, why couldn't you be on Netflix so we could watch it all now? I think that would have broken my brain, though. It, yeah, I think you have to watch, to, especially you know this Twin Peaks: The Return. You have to watch it in, in increments. Yeah, you gotta let there's, Twin there, Peaks there's only so much Dougie it. you can take in one sitting. Seriously. <laughs> and you can quote me on that. But yeah, you gotta let it settle a little bit in your brain. Yeah. This part of Twin Peaks, and see, and now, and now from here, we don't really have because, like the uh, electricity crackling, the electricity crackling, always good. But from here, you know, in the first episode when we when we first saw the Roadhouse, and we had James walk in, and we had some people talking over, you know, we don't now from here on out, it's just music. You know, there's no. You know, there's no credit sequence, I guess. Yes. Really. So, um, it uh, it's a disappointment, a little bit. So. Yeah. Um. 
All right, Charles. So what's your uh, rating for my, this episode? My rating for this one, eight and a half out of 10 cell phones that Lucy doesn't understand. I like that. I'm going to give this one nine out of 10 ties that Dougie can't put on. You really like this one. I like this one because um, I like Janie E. I like, and I like the Dougie Jones storyline. Okay. I mean, if that, if this were its own thing, you know, I would watch the Dougie Jones storyline, I think. Got it. Um, and I and like I said, I'm feeling a little bit more patient with it because I know what's going to happen. I know he's going to become Cooper. I know what we have to do. So I'm just enjoying watching the Dougie storyline unfold. Now, now that you know where the ride goes. Yeah, now that I know where the ride goes, it, it's a little bit easier to 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 wait to along take. with that ride. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think it's I think it's fun, and I like the fact that we are we're really making progress with this episode. You know, we've got the FBI knows where Cooper is. Or so, where they know something's going on, and they know that. So we've got some movement with the FBI. Uh, we got Major Briggs fingerprints in the system, so we know we're going to have more movement with the FBI. And we we learn a lot in this episode, like Bobby being a cop, and yeah. um, just. It, it's there, there were a lot. Of, there were a lot of good introductions in this episode. Yeah, I mean, we got a and bunch of have... bunch, bunch of new characters. Um, get to see some more old friends, mm-hmm. and uh, the Mister C mystery is really interesting. By this point, the Mister C inter- mystery is very interesting. I think the Dougie and the Dougie Jones mystery just got more interesting because of the whole like we could pay them back. Like who would? Yeah, what's, yeah, what's, what's what's up with the you know like these yeah, guys so that, that you owe money to? Yeah, that becomes in itself a better story. And we were talking about it where you see those glimpses of old Coop, of Cooper with the thumbs up and the drink and the coffee. And, you know, little, I'm just going to take little to hopeful the maple teases. Syrup. Yeah. Yeah. The little teases of things that are going to bring Cooper back. And the fact that, you know, Mike's watching out for him too. You know, Philip, you know, Philip Gerard is watching over him and. So it feels like a little bit – it feels like the momentum starts in this episode. Yeah. Now, so. a, a lot of people, especially me, you know, when we were watching this the first time, we were hoping that um, Dougie's return to Cooper would be like a light switch. It would be flicked. Like, you know, we could yeah. just like all of a sudden Cooper would be back. Right. And, but, 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 it, but, it's more, but it's more like the road back, for, is, back to Cooper is it's not a light switch. It's more like a puzzle. Yeah. And you have to kind of like one piece is being laid and, and you have to kind of like, you know, like a little bit of coffee here. You know, there's a little bit mm-hmm. of, you know, the, the pancakes and maple syrup or whatever. And uh, just little little tidbits of Cooper. Uh, exactly. You know, the the flag when he stares at the flag and whatnot, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and, and all of that kind of finally pieces together into Cooper. Right. Right. And I think that... Uh... It was a, you know, it, it it's a long time coming. So I think for us to expect, you know, to just smack and, and have it be Cooper again, I think was right. Foolishly optimistic on our part that the slow burn, I think, fits a little bit better right. with what we're used to. We just so. we're we're just wanting Cooper back. We're we just, want Cooper we back. Were so e- we, we were eager. Yes. And we still don't even know if we have him, but you know, who knows? Come on, season than, four. Yeah, season four. Come on. Four, season four. All right, we're gonna, you know, you know, we're gonna buy that damn new box set. So you might as well give us season four. Just give us a season four. Just make, just the make, least you can do for us, David Lynch, Mark Frost. Make the announcement. You know, Christmas is coming. It's a good time to do it. Yeah. Give us a nice little uh, present before the holiday. Twenty twenty. You know. Yeah. It's like coming back to Showtime for season four. Seriously. Right. All right. I think it'd be good. Fingers crossed, at least. All right. Um, anything else before we uh, do our little closing here? Did we get any feedback? Add? We did not get any feedback this time. No, no I didn't get any feedback either. So yeah, yeah. Hope so thanks for listening and enjoying. No, we still need to uh, get in touch with Chris Lassiter. Maybe I was yeah, th- right. I was thinking maybe like if we do like the first eight parts, and then we could kind of okay. maybe take a little break, that works. and then we can get work Chris in, and then we could do the last eight. All right. That works. Does that work? Some, sound works like a plan. Me. I hope right. it works for Chris. Yep, we'll see. Um, so we'll, you know, just I still got his email, so 
uh, express that an interest in, in the email. So if you want to be like said Chris Lassiter, uh, you want to reach out to us, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, let us know what you're thinking about Twin Peaks The Return or any other Twin Peaks goodness, David Lynch goodness, maybe Mulholland Drive since we're uh, about to see that once again. Yep, that's you can right. You reach out to us at ghostwoodpodcast at gmail.com. It's Gus, Ghostwood Podcast it at the Gmail. The Gmail. Dot com. Or you can um, please uh, follow us on Twitter at Ghostwood Cast. We definitely appreciate that. And please um, please give us a like on Facebook because we're very close to 100 on, Ooh, on Facebook. Heck yeah, come on. So I think we need like six more. So oh, come on, you guys. You can, we can get six more, right? So, yeah. if, so if you're not already liking us on Facebook, please do that. We'd love to get at least to 100, right? Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, please do that. Obviously, if we got any news of, of stuff that's coming out or any Twin Peaks goodness, something cool that um, Zan finds on the, you know, um, on the uh, the meme pages or, you know, the, 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 sort of shit, the, ship, the, sh- the yep. ship posts and all that. So, um, the ship posts. Yep. Exa- exactly. So... Good. Please do that. Please check that out. Um, other than that, uh, please go to iTunes or Apple Podcasts, rate and review us. That helps people find us. Hopefully, you enjoy what we do here at Ghostwood. We try our best. And uh, Zan, where can they reach you on the interwebs? Um, Zan Sprouse on the Facebook and Udinax19 on the Twitters and yeah. on the Instagrams. Excellent. And as for me, what about of, you, course, Charles? of course, Charles Skaggs, at Charles Skaggs on Twitter, at Charles Skaggs on the Instagrams. Facebook course, Charles Skaggs in Hilliard, Ohio. And my blog of Geeky Things. You already heard the sound effect, so you know it's there. Damn good coffee and hot. As you give the thumbs up. Damn good coffee and hot. Where I talk about all the stuff we talk about here on Ghostwood, Twin Peaks, Dave Lynch News, anything that comes out. If I get some Dune casting news, and I'm going to show Zan this, I have my Sting action figure. Very nice. Funko Funko figure. Very nice. I do have um, Stuart Copeland and Andy Summers on order from awesome. Amazon. That'll be coming hopefully tomorrow. So I'll have Sweet. the entire police set. But um, I saw that they're going a um, Sting in his flying underpants from Dune. That's what he calls them. The flying, the flying underpants. underpants yes. Flying underpants. Um, that apparently is going to be like a uh, New York Comic Con exclusive Funko figure. This that week. makes going to New York worth it. Let me yeah, tell you. Yeah. So hopefully that means we're going to get Dune Funko figures. Because that would be That'd awesome. Be cool, kind of gross. <laughs> I don't know if I want the Baron. Baron. The Baron That'd would be. Gross. be yeah, Baron, Baron would be gross. But you gotta I'd get. You gotta get. You gotta get Paul Atreides, right? Yeah, I'd love to get Peter DeVries, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that would be I, uh, cool. Yeah, fun get, get, get a little more Patrick Stewart as Gurney Halleck. Oh, yes. That'd be awesome. Yeah, Funko's getting more of my money than I think they should lately. Cause they, <laughs> they just started releasing a line of uh, Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. Oh, yeah. So they... There's Maggie, who's like half alien. Nice. There's Marge, who's like a panther. And... Uh, um. Witch Lisa, King Homer, and Bart as a fly as the fly. Oh yeah, that was a good one. So those are good. And then I just saw that they're going to do um, Willie as Freddy Krueger. Very so cool. Very that'll cool. That'll be good. And then of course, um, they did uh, Dark Crystal: Age of Resistance, which I yeah. ran right out and purchased. Yeah, there's they're doing a lot of those too. So yeah, so yeah, I got all of those. <laughs> good. They know how to hook you, don't they? Yeah, they yeah they got me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I tried to. I said I try to keep it to things that I really really love, but unfortunately, I really really love a lot of things. Yeah, so. exactly. Um, I forgot to mention that if anybody uh, wants to check out my other podcast that I do for Southgate Media, uh, please check out Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast. Yeah, where Zan is on the schedule, back on the schedule. We're going to talk eventually. We're going to talk the. Um, Oh yeah, the Terror of the Autons. Terror of the Autons. From the John Pertwee era. We're going to talk about Heck that. Heck yeah. That's going to be a lot of fun. That is going to be great. Always great to have you on the podcast. We do, you have a lot of fun. It's great for Zan and I to talk Doctor Who, something besides Twin Peaks for a while. It's fun to switch our geekdom. Exactly. Up, it's like, you know? We can be more yeah. than just Peaks geeks, although there's nothing wrong with that. 
by any No, there's means. just more to us than that. Exactly. We're, yeah. We've got a little more depth than that. We're geeks on so many levels, Charles. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it's been, you know, like, hey, I've got other podcasts. That, so, yeah, Jesse Jackson and I, uh, my co-host on Next Stop Everywhere, um, we do, uh, you know, we're going to be doing, we're actually doing Titan Talk. Titans season two Yay. is back and we're doing Titan Talk right now. Uh, getting a lot of good response already. A lot of downloads on the first episode of season two. Cool. So, good job, you guys. so if you're a fan of uh, the Titan show or on DC Universe, please check us out at Titan Talk. Or if you like Doom Patrol, because that's kind of Titans related because of Cyborg, please check that out. Um, we have a lot of fun on that one. And uh, it's glad to see uh, we're getting some uh, response to that one. So, that is good. So please check that out. Uh, other than that, um, you know, we'll be back here in a couple of weeks, hopefully, for Case Files. Case Files. Episode 5 of Twin Peaks Season 3, The Return. So we'll be doing that at Episode 62. So uh, please awesome. come on back for that. We're almost to Episode 8. I'm very excited. Yep, exactly. So, um, yeah, the big Episode 8. Well, that'll be a fun one. And uh, is there anything else before we sign off? No, that's it. Just thanks for listening, everybody, and uh, we'll be talking at you again soon. Exactly. We'll see you next time right here, Ghostwood, the Twin Peaks podcast. Bye, everybody. Thanks.